He's the world, uh, former world rider and the current Australian national team coach. Uh, and that's uh, Mark uh, Lemon. And we will talk about his big mission later. But right now, we will go to Cuba. Hi. Hello. How are you, Baranski? I'm fine, thank you. You're good? How's, how's life yeah. in Poland now? Yeah, very nice. Uh, we start uh, a training in Poland. Mm -hmm. uh, they train in Opole, Częstochowa, yeah, in many, many cities. Uh, start a uh, train on the track. So the season is on the way now? Yeah. It's starting. Yeah, That's great. So I, I heard something about Canal Plus. What did they yeah. do? Uh, they have a uh, rights for um, TV shows. Okay. You know. Yeah, yeah, the Speedway matches. Yeah. yeah. Uh, they uh, can uh, uh, film uh, Speedway. Okay. Uh, for four years. Okay. Uh, for uh, for uh, tw uh, 242 million zloty, they paid. Whoa, that's a lot of money. It's uh, 53 uh, million of euro. <laughs> yeah. And <laughs> Insane money. Yeah. Yeah. You can uh, build. Have you ever seen uh, a, a new stadium of Ożewuj? Yes, I, I've been there. I, I've been there. Yeah. If you have uh, 53 million euro. Yeah. Uh, you can build five of uh, the stadium. Five of the stadiums. Yeah. Wow. It's a lot of money. So every four years, you can like build five new stadiums. Yeah. It's insane. Yeah, it's... Uh, <laughs> <but laughs> it's more money than you and I will make ever in our lifetime. Okay? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think that this money is so... Uh, uh, it's so... Uh, no, wait. <laughs> Sorry for my English. No, no, no. It's, you're getting there. You're getting yeah. there. Uh, Extra Liga uh, need uh, this uh, uh, this morning. Yeah. Because uh, I think uh, the rules of Speedway is too uh, mm, it's too weird. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think they pay, for example, uh, for uh, processing of starts. You know. It's it's so weird in Poland. Yeah, they must uh, buy a uh, computers, for example, and uh, this process must to be a uh, uh, easier. Yeah. I... So it's like and... infrastructure. Yeah, and um, I heard about a uh, second uh, division. Yes. Uh, extra Liga teams must uh, be have a uh, uh, second uh, team in second division. Yeah. Ah, okay. So if you are in Extra Liga, you need to have a team in the lower division. Yeah. To build up, and second division is the lowest league, is it? Yeah. Yes. So in between there, you have first Liga. Yeah. Yes. But but uh, that's a good rule. Yeah, of course for. Uh, to to many, not kill the sport, you know. Yeah, many, many riders, uh, if uh, they on the top, uh, they can't ride on, on Liga. Yeah. So in second division, they ride, 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 and they uh, will be a better. And then the club will give all the professional help down yeah. to the young riders. Yeah, of course. Like a machine, you know. Yes, yes, of course. That's cool news. That's actually great news. It's better news than this other little bit stupid news from Poland where you can only ride for one other club outside of yeah. in Extra Liga or two in the lower leagues. But but this this, this rule is quite good. I, I think that would be something that uh, makes this rule from um, that you need to have two junior riders. You know? Yeah. It, it's like building on this concept. Yeah, it's a rule like uh, uh, football. Yeah, yeah. And uh, first team have a 
reserve team on lower league. Okay. For example. I didn't know that because I don't follow football <laughs> at all. <laughs> yeah, but in Poland we had uh, like this. Yes, I know. But you're a sports guy. You love all yeah. sports. You're crazy. Do you know who won the ski jump today? The woman? No. I don't Ma like Lundby. She was she became gold medalist in the large huh? hill yeah. in the ski jumping and she created that event. She was pushing oh. to get that event and she won it. Oh, so okay. happy birthday to Norway. <laughs> <laughs> I should have flags. I forgot the flags. Ah, okay. It's, it but that matter. was a great accomplishment. Come on. Yeah. Okay. Great, great, great. I write about her. And Ziwa also became world champion the other day. Yeah? yeah. Ziwa. Yeah. It's Z, yeah, not Ziva. The other day. <laughs> yeah. A couple of days it's, ago. I it's think. strange a Polish name because they have a Z. Oui. Yeah, in Norway they call him Sila <laughs> in the commentator. So yeah. <laughs> it's, it's different. The Ziva. So um you we, we, we talked earlier this week or hmm? yeah. You said something that media cannot go to the stadiums. Yeah, I Why? think it, because uh, because we have a uh, Corona rules, you know. Okay. It's it's. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> okay, so we will solve this problem then. So maybe you can send application, because yeah. I will buy you this bubble. <laughs> so you will be Cuba bubble boy. We like give a, you some oxygen mask so you can have yeah. some oxygen in there. And then we can dun, 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 you can roll around and see <laughs> what you can do with that. But nobody uh, can hurt me, hurt me, you know. No, no, no. They can use you as a little football, you know. <laughs> <laughs> like, ding, ding, ding. <laughs> like speedway football, maybe a new new branch in the speedway sport. Football on speedway. Yeah, you know. football speedway. Yeah. We have the goal, you know, we have the goal in the start. <laughs> so. <laughs> Yeah, of course. <laughs> okay, Kuba. Dobra. Thank you. We will see you next week and you will try to get to somewhere uh, at yeah, any given time when the opportunity comes, you will go to any track and do some interviews. So we are you're only waiting for that now. Okay. Dobra. I will try. See you. Yeah. Bye. And then we're going over to commercials. Speedway Canvas today. Buy them at speedwaycanvas.com. Hi, Mark. Hey, Henrik. How are you, buddy? I'm great. I'm great. How are you? Yeah, I'm pretty good. You know, it's uh, it's March now. We've I've, I've, Done my first uh, English uh, winter ever, <laughs> so that's been fun. Uh, still in lockdown in the UK, so um, I'm 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 bearing. I'm keeping up well. Because you you you're normally in in the great southern land that got lost in the summer for a million years down there. Normally in the winter time here. Yeah, I, I know. That's it's my my life has kind of changed. Uh, you know, quite a lot in the last sort of probably you know 15 years. I, I probably spent more time in the UK. Well, I, I do spend more time in the UK. Uh, and you know, you know, I kind of—I never want to admit it, but I actually live permanently in the UK. Um, I, I go home obviously to see family and, and friends. Um, uh, you know, for you know, five six weeks during the during the off season. And um, you know, obviously when I was racing, I'd go back. You know, spending you know, three or four months at home in, mm -hmm. in Australia and get the sun. But uh, things have slightly changed with uh, with lockdown. Um, you know, the, the cost of flights to get back to to Australia and, and obviously spent, having to spend. Two weeks in uh, quarantine in a hotel, uh, I didn't fancy. So uh, we, I decided to uh, you know, see how it goes here in, in Europe for uh, for a time. Yeah. So it's your first winter ever in Europe. Mm. Yeah. Ah, yeah. Yes, yes. First, first, first full winter. Yeah. Yeah, but how how does the lack of vitamin D working for you? Well, it's crazy, man. Like I, I went, I went and had this like this. Um, Biological kind of um, biopsy kind of test. Yeah. Um, a, a company called Randox uh, in Liverpool, and uh, when I'd finished racing, just to, to see where I was at, and um, they came back and wanted the report saying I had a you know a 
you know, a deficiency of vitamin D. Ah. And I'm like, I'm like, no shit, Sherlock. I live in the UK. <laughs> you know, it's like we never see the sun. So, uh, I mean, I, I must, I must confess, because we've been in lockdown and where I where I live, um, we we go for lots of walks most days, and I've actually. Uh, I think when you're kind of working in you know, that that grind, and you go to work and it's dark, and you come home and it's dark, and yeah. you, you're in the office all day, uh, and you you miss that that you know those, those the rays. Daytime, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I, I've managed to you know, you know get out during the you know get some uh, winter sun, and uh, it hasn't been too bad actually. Yeah, you know, it's, it's kind of gone along pretty quick. So yeah, I can't I can't complain. No, but you know we were working in the speedway world, and is we can still work when it's dark and be outside and have fun when it's light, you know, because no one will kind of die if we are skipping the hours <laughs> a little bit or changing well, uh, them a little bit. Yeah, well, hopefully no one dies. Uh, <laughs> the first thing, but yeah, it's, I mean, like, you know, like for me, you know, obviously I, I work with Bellevue Speedway, uh, you know, on the domestic side here in the UK and obviously Team Australia on the international side. So it, it doesn't really matter where you are in the world; you can still operate. You know, we got a, you got a laptop. You can travel. You can you can get get by. So um, it doesn't seem to matter. And like dealing with speedway riders, they operate in all, all nocturnal hours. So um, yeah, it could be. It's it's quite convenient to, to be anywhere yeah. really. It's a different type of business in a way than to have a normal job where you need to be in the office. You need to be on a certain point at a certain time, and after that time nothing more happens you go home and that's life you know you cannot even talk to your colleagues because it's strange why did you choose speedway how, how did you get into speedway what's your background for all all the new people which never follow speedway man i, I think speedway found me okay. um you know and, and I, I feel really grateful and, and very uh humbled to still be involved in uh, motorsport and especially speedway i have a great passion for um, and to, to race as long as I did, you know, I raced for over 25 years and uh, I'm in management now. I feel very fortunate still to be involved and, um, you know, I get up every morning and feel quite, you know, comfortable in, in my environment and I enjoy it every day. You know, every, you know, that has its challenges, of course, mm -hmm. but I, as a young kid, you know, I, I always had a love for motorbikes, you know, as ever, as long as I can remember, you know, having a little a Honda, a little monkey bike, little Z50, that, you know, <laughs> yes. the, the, the family bike, you know, I was the youngest of four, so we used to share this motorbike, and I, I think I probably occupied the, the time on the on the bike as, as, as much as I could from about, you know, an early age, about three, I think, when I, I first started riding. Um, so I always had a passion for, for the motorbike, um, but I grew up in, you know, country Victoria in Australia, which is a very dominant, you know, Australian rules, you know, football state. So I was very keen on all sports. You know, I tried cricket, basketball, baseball, mm -hmm. you know, anything that was going, I, I had a crack at. But uh, I really wanted to be a Aussie rules footballer, and that's where my, my heart was really probably set and focused on being an Australian rules footballer. Mm -hmm. And, and in the, you know, that was a winter sport, and in the summer, you know, we used to go down to Olympic Park Speedway in Madura and, and watch the legend Phil Crump, you know, you know, kick ass all the of all the Europeans that used to come down there and <laughs> used to cheer him on, and uh, you know, I had, you know, had a real fondness for, for for Olympic Park even back then, and and Crumpy is a, a young a young kid's hero. Yeah, and I did that during the summer months, and I I, I luckily they, they they started this junior speedway uh, there, one of the uh, pioneer clubs. You know, I, you know, it started probably in. In Adelaide, at the Sidewinders Club, by the you know the Baker family, who who now actually ironically are, are a team sponsor with CBS Spins mm -hmm. for our national team, and we're very grateful for their help. But uh, so Madura had a junior club, and we I'd, I'd you know get my my dad to say oh, we got to go early, we got to go and see these kids ride these bikes. And you know, long story short, uh, I I managed to get one when I was about uh, 13 years of age and and start racing. So it kind of it just grew from there, really. So you started at the age of 13. That's like, in my world, I started when I was three. Smarschlik started also when he was like around three, four years old. So 13, wow. it's, yeah, it's a good age, actually. Uh, but do you think maybe start earlier would be better for you? Do, do you think that would, could be some tipping point that you could play with it a little bit more earlier? I, I think you know the the key to everything is um, you know moderation, mm -hmm. uh, and I think you know, and if it's fun for a young kid, it has to be fun. Yeah, you yeah, know, yeah, yeah. You know, you know I, I know we're probably going to touch on the, the the topic of junior speedway. Yeah, we will. And, yeah, and 
I, I think for me, uh, you know, I, I had no vision of being a professional motorbike rider, mm. none whatsoever. Didn't even know it existed, you know. And you know, uh, to 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 get racing the junior and start to learn the environment, and you know, like you know, I, I, was, I was fortunate. Like we had, like I said, we mentioned Phil Crump. Yeah, you know, yeah. In, in our town, and you know, I became good friends with Jason Crump. You know, as, as young kids racing yeah. junior speedway bikes, and to me, it was just like we're we're just racing motorbikes. We we take our dirt bikes. You know, we, we could ride between each other's house, and along the railway track, we you know we push it across the road so we wouldn't get in trouble by the law. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah, and yeah. Sometimes, and um, <laughs> yeah, sometimes. <laughs> sometimes we can't really both of us. And yeah, so we we just wanted to be riding two wheels and have, having fun, and, and like there was nothing more. I, I never give it any more thought. I know I can speak for Jason because the whole family were in, you know in that environment of you know international sportsmen. Yeah, there, grandfather, and Jack, yeah. father, and then, yeah. yeah. They knew all about Jason knew what he wanted to be, but me, as far as I was just riding, enjoying riding motorbikes. And I think there's a, there's a fine balance um, getting in too early and getting burnt out yeah, okay. too yes. early. So I, I think it's how you, you what sort of environment you're brought up in and how they they sort of operate. You know, if they you're destined that you know you're you're, you're going to be this and you're going to be that. You know, for a young kid, that's probably too much. Um, but for me, you know, I said I wanted to be an Aussie rules Aussie rules footballer. And, uh, and probably at 16, 17 years of age, someone asked me the question, you know, like, you know, you know what do you want to be? Do you want to be a speedway rider or an Aussie rules football? And at the time I was like, why are you asking me, would I want to be a speedway rider? Because yeah. I, I didn't think that was even an option. Yeah, yeah. You know? And, uh, you know, the great Sam Malenko, he's, he's one that sort of, he was staying at our place, um, you know, when he was racing in Madura and he'd see me race and kind of said, you know, maybe you've got a career in this and you can come to like the UK and Wolverhampton and stay with us. And, and that kind of started selling the seed. And then I spoke to Neil Street, which was, you know, obviously Jason Crump's grandfather. Yeah. And uh, they they offered me a contract at 17 to come over and try out at, at, at pool. So my mind changed and um, all of a sudden I got an offer to come to the UK at, at you know 17 years of age. And, you know, I foolishly took it, you know. I probably would have been a much yeah, better yeah. footballer. <laughs> you could be an accountant too, you know. Yeah, well, this is true. Punching the computer all day. Mm. So, did you're on a mission, you know? And I, we we had a talk. Uh, was it a week ago, two weeks ago, something like that? Uh, and then I haven't talked to you since a few years back when we met in Torun when when i was uh, living down there in poland but but now now you're focused on the junior uh, racing and you you put out some numbers uh, uh, just to prove the point that you see where all the young riders are today they are centralized in poland more or less and the rest of the world is like lagging and they are not lagging a little bit they're lagging actually a lot um, what is this mission about? What do you want to do? What is your dream here? Well, well let, let me start. You call it a mission, you know. As, as I, I was just, you know, st you know, crunching numbers and yeah. and just doing doing my thing. But yeah, well, you know, obviously we got we got in lockdown last year, and uh, so I had a bit of free time on my hands, like everyone did when it first what happened. Um, so I thought I'd just do a little exercise and um, have a look at the junior you know, environment because we get so busy and caught up in our own little world and we carry on, we're just operating, we're doing, just functioning. Yeah. Um, but, you know, this, the sport of a whole, I sort of, you know, it, it came, it, it, how it came about was because there was a, a, a they, Motorcycle in Australia wanted to do a grade change, you know, on, a, on, a, on an age group. And um, it sort of like, it resonated with me. And I'm like, I don't think this is the correct way to go. So I, I had to sort of, not prove a point, but like show them the reason why I feel that this, you know, uh, objective or the way they wanted to go probably wasn't the right time to do this mm -hmm. because of the numbers just didn't stack up. Mm -hmm. So I went about doing a, you know, analysis um, and, you know, it's, it's probably quite boring to a lot of people. But yes, of course, the, but, but important the still. Yeah, the numbers were quite daunting, you know, like, you know, you mentioned Poland. Those numbers were good, you know. Like you know, the England, English has got a pretty half decent junior junior system, you know. And but their numbers weren't so great, you know. The, the Danes and the Swedes, the Scandinavians have been so good at the junior yeah. junior side of things for so long with their 85 Cs. Those numbers weren't great, and you know Australia was pretty good on the number front, 
but still, you know, it's, it's, is it tr- that they don't transpire into senior riders. No. So there's there's challenges out there, and, and, and just really got a lot of people thinking. You know, okay, you know, this isn't as great as we we'd hoped. You know, kids are nowadays probably you know inside playing FIFA and you know on their PlayStation, yeah, yeah, or is something you know, else, you know, yeah. and tablet, and, and inside not getting out and yeah. having the fun that we enjoyed. You know, I'm, I mean, I'm sure they are having fun, but you know. I think they're missing out something. They're yeah, yeah, I, I fully agree with you. They're, they're missing out on this uh, fun action where you can go out, you can break a collarbone, and you can laugh of it and have fun. You know, <laughs> that's not breaking a collarbone, is it? Yeah, no, no, it's only a joke. <laughs> but yeah, yes, of so... course, yeah, and it's a good environment too. You know, so in the speedway world, I, I feel like that, and I always been. Welcome, welcomed everywhere I came. You know, I was to Argentina, Poland, Germany, UK, and Denmark, Sweden, everywhere, and, and get welcome uh, everywhere you come. Um, yeah, we we are our own community, but we uh, but we can see in the numbers that you published. Not all the numbers are one hundred percent correct, but they are not so far off, and and they are telling a story that we are going downhill. What happened to Sweden? Do you think? Yeah, I, mean, I think everyone's had the same issue. I, I, I think this really what proved the point was that you know it's it's not just you know one country that's got an issue. Oh. We've all got an issue. We're, we're, it's a challenge that we've got to to get these young kids out, outside the house, out, off their tablets, and 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 into a you know yeah, maybe maybe motorcycling is not for everybody, but you know you know what we enjoyed as young kids, and you know it's it, like I said, the games change, but. You know, there's a there's a life. You know, that you can make a career out of this if they if they want to. You know, and that, that's the thing. And like, we've got no real evidence, you know, other than what we can remember of the the, the numbers that, that were involved at junior sport. Yeah. And this, you know, it'll fluctuate from you know town to country to you know city, wherever it is, with the numbers. You know, that they do with young kids. Uh, and we know in we know in general in in sport in junior sport. That you know only a small percentage cross over from juniors to seniors, but I think the number is like two percent or one point something percent. You know that becomes something. Yeah, yeah. Or have the very... potential to become something. Mm-hmm. But if you have a bigger pool, yeah, you know, that, then this percentage those, will be. Those, well, the, the percentage won't change, but the numbers will. Yeah. So yeah, it's, it's so we got talking about that, and I've, I've thrown it out to a few people. I mean. I, you know, I know the FIM have got, you know, challenges, you know, just with the COVID times and it's probably yes. not, it's not the time to do it, but I, it's something we need to, you know, as a collective, you know, really look and tackle it, you know, whether we, 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 we start investing, well, we have to, we start investing, I think, and, you know, we're probably at a time where we don't want to invest in our sport, but we, we must. I think so, but I, I think the time is correct to start thinking about this and put it, this awareness out there. Your timing is actually quite correct right now because we can't do anything else than wait now if the season will start, will it not, and all this stuff. We are, we are waiting for the uncertainty. Mm-hmm. Uh, but when, when, when I was uh, the leader in Oslo Speedway and in the Federation as the uh, uh, second in command of the Federation for Norwegian Speedway. It was like a big issue to just get people into the Speedway sport because it doesn't exist, you know, in, in, the, yeah. in the realm of uh, everything else that exists in Norway, which is much yeah. bigger, like cross-country skiing, biathlon, Nordic ski jump, uh, football, you know, and it kind of ends there, you know. Uh, Speedway, we, we really doesn't exist that much, and and um, and uh, it's it's difficult for us to bring new people into that because when they watch television, they can watch a Speedway Grand Prix. If they want to watch that in Norway, it's hidden under a payment wall, which it's so heavy that you need to top, 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 um, what do you call it, uh, subscription yeah, yeah. To, to get that. And people, most people don't pay that to mm. watch the Speedway Grand Prix. And if they watch it, 
and they go to a Speedway event in Norway, what they see on Speedway Grand Prix is not what they get in real no. life. It's not no. even close. Yeah, like, like I said, there's there's so many challenges, and like you know, we we are a niche sport. You know, we, we have to accept that. You know, I mean, yeah. like the, the the Grand Prix do a wonderful job. You know, they the, are. If, you know, you're fortunate They're to, to leading watch the way. Yeah. Yeah. But like you know, like you said, the, the marketing aspect, you know, we have to like sort of you know be a bit more experimental today. We have to like modernize to, to reach the, the the wider audience, you know. And you know, the, I think the the hardest thing I, I find that to answer when everyone anyone asks me, how how do you get into the sport? Yeah. You know, it's it's well for me it was like we, I, I went to Speedway and then I, I had a family friend that you know you know race Speedway and, and that's kind of I got in the back door. But I come from a very Ah, oh, you're lagging, uh, Mark. Wait, wait, wait. What can we do to fix that? Mark? Uh, maybe we should try to hang up with Mark and call him back. Right. Or Mark, are you there? Uh, hang up with uh, Mark and let's see if we can call him back. Call him back. There we go. Live challenges. Maybe he didn't pay a subscription. Internet. Are you back, uh, Mark? <laughs> I think you I you start lagging, and it was a very long time. Your your face was like this <laughs> <laughs> all the time on the screen. Yeah. So I'm we sorry, let it my, stay like a poster boy, you know, like my big screen. my my Wi-Fi obviously just dropped out. Sorry about that. Guys. Ah, she didn't. She she you didn't pay the subscription. Bill. No, maybe maybe not maybe not. <laughs> but uh, yeah, start again. So, just just tell us because the the line you were talking about there was quite good. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Like I said, you know, to getting involved in the sport, you know, the introduction side of things. It's yeah. I think we need to work a lot harder on that. You know, like I said, I, I came from a very small town, so you know, Speedway was a you know, a, a very easy to accessible, yeah. and you know, like they they do a really great job at the Madrid Motorcycle Club. You know, you know, you can go down there on a Wednesday, you can have a, you know, the tracks open. It's you know, there's so much access there, but even so, it's still tough. But you know, when you live in a city like Manchester, you know, we have we have one of you know, the longest running consistent Speedway clubs in the world. Yeah. And half the people don't know about it. No. You know, and, and and it's very challenging just to to it, to get get the awareness out there. And like long gone the days when Johnny Hoskins brought the sport to Europe, and they put an A-frame sign out the front of a you know a, a marked out field, and yeah. you know, hundred thousand people turned up. You know, yeah. We could only wish. Yeah, so, this is like. <laughs> yeah, things have changed. I mean, we're still the extreme sport, but uh, we, we're just not getting the extreme crowd. So. And and like I said, we're a niche we're a niche sport, but we have to be smart and we we have to really you know put our heads together and mm -hmm. and really I think really start to to, to try and re reshape re rebrand restructure the you know the the, the infrastructure you know so absolutely to speak, because, I I yeah. totally agree with you and and I I said this for many years and I I felt that I have been talking for death heirs for many 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 years and. Uh, as I told you in our previous conversation, and and uh, I talked with Swimo, Swemo, I tried to get into England. I went to Poland. I learned even more in Poland, and and I, I see there's a big change that is needed in this sport. Uh, but I I tried to use my knowledge uh, when I had the power in Oslo Speedway. You know, to use my knowledge to see, experiment with different types of marketing. Who will I reach with that marketing? Of course, marketing is dynamic. But, you know, in Speedway also, when you're a small club, you don't have so much budget. You don't have a large budget. You can't just use one million pound on mm. marketing. We, we don't have that type of money, you know. Mm. So how can we market in the cheapest way and reach the most people? <coughs> And today mm. we are very lucky because we have social media. Mm. You know, we, we can reach a lot of people in a very short way, in an easy way in social media. But there needs to be a platform and it needs to be a common ground 
across borders, across uh, uh, clubs and all this, because if we don't stick together now, <laughs> we will be dead in quite short time. And then we will have only the poster countries left, Poland, Sweden, uh, Denmark and Great Britain, and the rest will be dead. You know. Yeah, I, I don't. I don't think the sport's going to die. I, I, I honestly, my opinion is that it won't die. It, it just probably won't be as professional as we want it to be. Mm -hmm. You know, it'll probably go to an, an amateur status. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I, I think we've seen ebbs and flows in, in speedway over the years. You know, of course, things, of course. You know, and you know, we're definitely in an ebb right now. And I, I kind of think we're we're actually going to start flowing a bit better. So you know, everyone's going to be keen and excited to get out and about and. Yeah, they may actually choose, you know, that 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 methanol, you know, that beautiful smell of methanol, and it's and, so know, many the, things with the speedway sport that yeah. people that never been to speedway should experience. Just yeah. what you said, the smell, only the yeah. smell. Get some cash flow. Yeah, yeah, because this or... is not benzene or <laughs> diesel or something like that. This is methanol, and it smells beautifully. You know. Yeah. It yeah. does. It does indeed. So yeah, yeah. yeah. But like I said we need some clever clogs out there to probably you know help us on on those things because you know we we run Speedway and we I think you know a lot of us do a really good job at that. But um, you know we need a lot more investment. You know a lot more sort of you know polishing it and uh, and, and getting it getting it under the, the fingernails of people that you know have not heard about it. So yeah. there's this like I said there's loads of challenges. You know at, at senior level at a low level. Um, but you know, we just need to really start to, to, to work, as you mentioned, work together and yeah. and uh, build the brand again. I think if if we are cooperating over the club borders uh, and over the federations and and also people inside the speedway communities, if you was working more together, I know this can be difficult for some people to do. Of course, yeah. uh, because there's always money and people that have interests in this and that and everything. There's always some politi politics mm -hmm. inside everything. But uh, mainly, we, we just need to do something if we want to grow this again. Because you have another problem. Tracks disappear. And tracks disappear because of lack of interest. And when you don't have strong clubs, then you will lose your track. Because this they can say, ah... You don't have any interest. We don't see this 20,000 people, 40,000 people anymore. Now we have only 5,000. That's nothing for us. So we want to make apartment building here. You know. Yeah, yeah. It's, I mean, the, the finance is obviously you know a big issue. You know, and and you know, it takes a very game promoter to, to to run a lot of meetings these days yeah. because uh, you know it's it's sort of like you know quality over quantity, and and I think that's probably why the Grand Prix works so good. You know, you've got the best of the best. Yeah. And then they, they they move it around country and and people save up to go to these 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 championship um you know world championship events where you when you're running a domestic you know league uh, format you know that 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 is hard work you know to try and get people in there week after you know and you know different teams coming and trying to pitch a different spin on it and you know you know but I, I think if we look back in the the days when there was like twenty thirty teams in a league yeah. and Ivan Major was, say, the star of the show, or Peter Collins. <laughs> they, they came to your track once a season. Yeah. You know? So you had to go on that those particular nights to see those stars. Of and there was generally one top star every track. You know, I mean, I think today's fans are probably blessed. They get to see a lot of the top riders, you know, quite frequently. You know, so that, it's, it's the product's good. But but now you touch on something which I heard when I was living in Torun because. I, I went to Torun a lot. I le lived just 10 minutes walk from the stadium. And when I heard there was some racing or practice, I just walked down and talked to my colleagues and friends. You know how it is. Mm -hmm. Then I talked, of course, with many of the journalists, colleagues I have, because I also work for Eurosport in Norway and want to be updated for my commentary. And I asked the question... It was this small event happening there. I think Greg Hancock was racing and there was some riders racing there. There was some open speedway event. No, nothing, nothing big. And there was no people watching this. And this was outside of Corona, <laughs> you know. And it should be people there watching that, like half full stadium at least. But there was no... And then I talked to a guy which told me that, you know... People in Torun, they see Greg Hancock every week or every second week. They see this world top class riders all the time. 
And when the club is losing or is like not promoted in a big way, they don't bother to go. Yeah, I think that probably comes back to the the rider pool. Yeah. You know, I mean, I, 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 I just to put it in comparison, when I when I first came to Europe in uh, the early nineties, yeah, uh, there, there was sixty Australian riders uh, in the UK. Yeah. Um, probably within about five or six years, with the, the, the work permit restrictions, we went down to like single digits. There was about eight or nine of us. Yeah. So it, it kind of dropped off, you know, with all the the, the restrictions of you know, um, you know, just about immigration and stuff like that. Yeah, there, yeah. There's, there's added problems created there, but it, yeah, you know, we, we we're seeing this mass, you know, influx of riders just drop off in yeah. the last twenty years, and you like like that's what I said. You know, you, you, you mentioned Greg Hancock. You know, he's, he's no he's no shabby rider, is he? You know, no, no, no. Time. He's a great rider. And, uh, and I, why is that not who, more spectators there watching? And when I get that answer, no, but we see them all the time. So it's like. Why should we go in and watch them? You know. But also, also I think you know the team sport. Uh, we underestimate the team sport. You know, it's it's like the the fans love supporting their teams. Yeah. You know, and that's what we see. We we like I said we run Bellevue Aces here in Manchester, and uh, you know to try and run an individual event, yeah. it's probably not as supported as well. You know, they want to come and support their club. So yeah, you know, and their team get behind them. So you know, we I think we we need to focus a bit more on that as well. Yeah. But um, yeah, there's, there's, like I said, there's issues. But like a lot of it comes down to that rider pool, you know, seeing the fresh faces coming through. But I, I don't know. But but um, do you think we ever will be at the stage that we will have fully packed stadiums again, like we have in Warsaw? Man, it's, it's hard to see anyone in the stadium at this moment in time, isn't it? You know, it's like I feel yeah, nervous. Yeah, yeah. I, I watched watch the Australian Open on tennis and seeing the crowds yeah. in the stadium. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's like... You know, when you hear distance. the ball like this, and you hear yeah. it much louder and the echo of the ball, <laughs> then you understand something is wrong. <laughs> yeah, I think we'll get back. We'll get back there. I, I, I'm sure we will. And, you know, like it's... it's you know, we ha- Well, I'm not saying we have to, but, you know, we've got to... Improvise. We've got to change. You know. You know. I said. I. I think everyone's having a tough time. You know. There's so yeah. much more to do, isn't there? People have so many choices, and it's fantastic. Yeah. But we're just. Gonna, we're just going to make their choice speedway. So that's the. That's the challenge. But is there another way people can watch speedway? You saw in Lublin they were using these lifts. Yeah, that's so cool. Wasn't it? Yeah, it was like insane. Like... <laughs> that was awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And that was, but I remember that match, the world uh, of na- the Speedway Nation of Nations match last year, and it was a little bit rain in the air, and it was the last day where spectators or anything in sports could happen in Poland because of the Corona ban that came then the following Sunday, and I saw you were not very happy <laughs> on the television. <laughs> No, I was I wasn't very happy. No. Pull us into that a little bit. Come on. Oh, okay. No, I I think the yeah you know, obviously that we had um uh the restrictions we got rained off on the Friday night so the the restrictions came on on the Saturday so yeah. we had no no crowd. Nope. Um, the forecast was pretty dire all weekend in all fairness and like you know the right decision on the Friday was was to cancel 100. You know the track wasn't great. The facilities to probably put the track wasn't really great to begin with, and I you know, I know I've been to you know I've raced at Lublin many 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 years ago, and I, I was there with Torren a couple of seasons ago as well, and they've got a, they've got a fantastic place at, yeah. at Lublin, and it's so exciting. I have the best fans in the world by far, but to, for this competition, you know, like it's got to you've got to raise the bar that that more for a world championship, and I felt that the facilities weren't quite up to scratch. You know, you know, they didn't have enough dry material to put the track back right. They didn't have the graders in. When they did get a grader in, they didn't have a grader driver. You know, so the FIM have a lot to sort of be responsible for not having the, the correct, you know, procedures, you know, ticked off, you know, and, and the boxes ticked there. Um, but, yeah, we we were all aware that the weather was going to be bad. We looked at the forecast for Sunday. So it was we, – we had the best chance to get the track on. We got the track pretty good. The riders obviously would never, you know, want to race on a perfect racetrack. They would did the practice, and it was all go, all systems go. But it was it was it was drizzling rain from yeah. heat one to you know, heat fifteen when the race got stopped. Yeah. Uh, and you know, I, I constantly 
questioned Phil Morris, the race director, are we continuing? He's like, yeah, we're going through to the end. So, you know, I used our Joker and Jamie Lindsay quite, not Joker, our, our under-21 yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, junior quite quite early. Yeah. Um, you know, obviously Jason Dore touched the tape, so I let him just have a cool down yeah, yeah, for, yeah. For, for a moment because he was pretty fired up. <laughs> um, but, yeah, and then we had some easy races. So when they made that decision after the, the accident with uh, Freddie Lindgren, yeah. um, you know, Freddie was struggling with, a, with a, uh, an arm injury, which, you know, as we see, he got... Uh, had surgical repaired a couple of weeks yeah. later. Um, so he's questioning his fitness. You know, was it the track? You know, it's, it's hard to say, but you know, he wasn't the, the fit, the, the Freddie that we know he, he is. But, but so you he, know, with speed riders, we always live on the edge. You know, Ty Wolfin, broken collarbone. You know, we have many stories about this. People, yeah, riders yeah, that shouldn't exactly. actually ride, but they still ride. They're, they're, they're brave. They're brave yeah, as part Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that when they when they made that decision to to cancel, normally you know you you have to speak to the team managers and the riders. You you consult with them before you make such a big decision. It's and then the the heart you know the the cohesion between the 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 jury, the race director, the referee, the clerk of the course, the riders, the team managers, all before this was great. Yeah. But then all of a sudden. They just flick the switch, we're off. And, you know, no, no, and like, we, were, we, were, we weren't to know, but the rain stopped. And to me and to the riders, the riders weren't complaining. No. You know, so I've never been to a meeting where the riders, the meeting gets cancelled because the riders weren't complaining. It's normally the other way around. <laughs> it's normally so, the other way around. Totally. So, yeah. <laughs> and, yeah, you're frozen again. Yeah. Call him back. It's gone again. Ah, there you are. Now you're back again. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Sorry. yeah so it's the first race that, and then you stopped like this. <laughs> uh, yeah. So where, where was I at when I, the I, first time the riders uh, did not complain and the race was stopped? Yeah. So stopped. That, yeah, this, this is the first first meeting I've ever been to where the riders don't complain and the race gets yeah. called off. It's normally the other way. The riders have to complain. Then yeah. there has to be an accident. You know. Um, you know, and like yeah, the, 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 the but heat. I think it was heat twelve or heat thirteen. You know, between Russia and Australia, and it was probably the race of the night. Yeah, yeah. Amos threw off Max for Jason Dorn. Insanely good. I remember then, it still. Yeah. Yeah. And then, then two races later, oh no, the track's not safe. Yeah. You know. And uh, they wouldn't, ra they wouldn't even race like that, not yeah. even close to that, if yeah. it wasn't safe. Yeah. And like, look, I, I'm okay. all for rider safety, but like none of our riders were saying, you know, we need this this meeting stop. So yeah. you can understand my frustration. We were in a really good chance to to win the event. And I felt that yeah, that was just taken away from us. You know, look, you know, it's it's done. It's history. It's, you know, Russia won, and, and yes, congratulations. Yes, of course, of course. And, you know, that wasn't that wasn't my, my 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 problem. But I just felt that the way that the organisers handled it, and bearing in mind, there's no spectators in the stadium, so there was no need to rush. What they no, no, they no, no, rushed no. they rushed that thing through so much. You had them till and, twelve o'clock. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So it's just like I couldn't understand this, and then you know. Yeah, no one was to know, but it actually did stop raining when the meeting was cancelled, which is yeah. even. Adds, <laughs> but isn't you know, that normal? Isn't that that always I, happens? I, I, don't, I, I don't know. I don't know. If you just, if you just, uh, yeah, that's probably that's probably nine years of frustration. I hope in our our <laughs> days with, you know, in a, I'm in a sure world, if world someone was checking you with the ter thermometer there, you will be like 100 degrees Celsius easily <laughs> at that time. I, it was nice pictures. Yeah, okay. So, did you check my web, uh, website, uh, my uh, shop? Your shop, you've checked your shop out. I love your, your uh, little yeah, mouse mats, man. They're yeah, the my mouse pads. They're, Everyone they're, love them. Yeah, they're the fastest mouse pads in, yeah, in the world. In the world. Like, you, can, you can hook up to your Wi-Fi when you've got bad Wi-Fi like me in no time. I should have one now. Yeah, you, you should actually have this uh, uh, Wi-Fi generator with the pedals. So you can <laughs> spin them a little bit faster. What else you got in your shop? And now we will have the 
episode 5, 1 to 5, episode Speed Rack Crazy Show, Crazy Show, 1 to 5, on VHS. Not Pira? Not Pira, VHS! Come on, Pira <laughs> is for old guys, come on. Yeah, it's, it's before my time too. Ah, this is so nice. <laughs> So this will be in the web shop. Do you want me to send you a copy? Maybe oh, man, 10, love, just a I'd big love, box? Yeah. I'd love to see the mail. Yep. The mailing fee will be like insane, but you will cover that because you're a rich guy in England, aren't you? Oh, yeah, okay. Speedway sport, like everyone is rich. <laughs> I wish that was the case. Mm -hmm. Me too. So thank you, Mark, for joining us. Uh, we had a nice uh, talk about this and as we both agree, this topic is like huge and we want to do something with the Speedway Sport. But as we all see now that everything is interconnected, you know, mm -hmm. marketing to get young riders, we need cool events like, you know, like Speedway Grand Prix type of standard events. And then we need to have marketing so people come to these events and blah, blah, blah. So there's a lot of stuff to grasp here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I, th I think the thing is, that in principle, we've got a great product. Yeah, know? we do. And, we do. And I, th I think yeah, people still come to it. Well, there's a lot of sports where people aren't going to it. So yeah. we got some. We just got to polish it, you know, a little bit. And, we just gotta and, keep and it you got pinned. one thing I found out over all these years is like you have these different types of fans. You have the fans that remember the numbers, the points, who did that in what heat and whatever. Then you have the fans that love the events, like the, 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 the visual aspect of the event, you know. Yeah, yeah, and, sure. and then you have people that are more into the technical riding. They don't care about the visual or the numbers. They just like the tight fighting on the track and all this. So, so we got a whole lot of different types of fans. We got a big mix there because... I'm not this guy. I don't never care about the numbers. I'm a commentator yeah. for Eurosport and I should sh remember the numbers. Never, ever. I don't have a chance to do it. But I think I think you touched on a really good subject there because it, it caters for, Speedway caters for a lot of you know, backgrounds. Yeah. You know, it, it doesn't matter you know, where you're from, what you do. There's something for everybody. Yeah. You know, and I think you know, it's a real f good family sport. Um, you know, that, you know, I don't think anyone would be disappointed with the no. Kawang. Because we, we, we have this opportunity to do something about this. And in, in my philosophy, I proved that, you know, that yeah, right. if you put all these things together, then you have something for everyone. And mm -hmm. the one who has proven this to everyone over the years is uh, uh, the Speedway Grand Prix, you know, mm -hmm. they've proven yeah. that, that mm -hmm. people go to the matches. And, and, yeah. and watch the events because mm. it's something for the guy that loves the numbers, it's something for people that love to look at the entire picture of everything. And there's something for people that love tight racing. And it's something for everyone that only want to go and eat a hot dog and smell the methanol, you know. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. yeah. You've sold it well, Henrik. Yeah. You've sold it well. Good job. Thank you for joining us. And uh, we will just continue. And we are into, whoa, nearly 50 minutes, uh, 50, yeah, something like that. So okay, well, hopefully that's a new record for the show, the longest one. Well, Mark Lemon. Sorry, I don't have a lemon. <laughs> I was thinking to go buy a lemon today just for fun, but I... <laughs> what, 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 what do the polls say? They say Citrona. Citrona? Yeah, Citrona. <laughs> okay, there you go. Mark Citrona. Citrona, yeah. <laughs> Great thing. Um, Hope we can do something together and work on this topic because uh, I would love to do s and see some change with that. So. Yeah, that's cool. I'm, I'm passionate about it, and I, you know, hopefully we can we can do something together. You know, no one yeah. can do it alone. Uh, we've got to work together. I'm and, in, and uh, I will try to pull everything I can. So yeah. Well, thank that's you for your time, and uh, thank you too. See you. Oh, see you mate. Keep it pinned. Bye. 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 E And that's what we had for you tonight at the Speed Ride Crazy Show. And as we see next week, we will have uh, Martin Smolinski from Germany. Uh, big thank you to Mark uh, Lorem 
and the production team for tonight's uh, the longest ever live broadcast of Speed Ride Crazy Show. So until next week, bye.